everyone today we will be discussing vq mismatch and aa gradient so first we will discuss aa gradient so what is aa gradient see aa gradient is basically the difference in partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar side and the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial side see if this is alveoli okay and here is the blood flow going okay so see if the pressure partial pressure of oxygen in alveoli is 100 and partial pressure of oxygen on the blood side means the arterial side is suppose let's say 95 so the AA gradient will be 100 minus 95 that is 5 okay so this is basically AA gradient now what is the normal value of AA gradient see the normal value is equal to age divided by 4 plus 4 so if the age of person is 20 then the AA gradient will be 9 okay now see AA, the value of AA gradient up to 30 is considered as normal why is it so why why the value is kept high see whenever you increase the value of any test okay the specificity of the test increases okay this is the rule from biostat okay which we will not discuss in detail now see whenever you increase the value the specificity increases whenever you decrease the value decrease the value of any test the sensitivity increase sensitivity it increases okay so see if you increase that value specificity increase if you decrease the value sensitivity increases that's why to increase the specificity of the AA gradient the value is kept higher so the value up to 30 is considered as normal now why is AA gradient used see AA gradient is used to know the cause of hypoxemia okay if the hypoxemic person comes then we can know the cause by AA gradient now see uh, there, there are some cause of hypoxemia that will result in increased AA gradient and some cause of hypoxemia that will result in normal AA gradient see these are all the causes of increased AA gradient these are all the causes of normal AA gradient means causes of hypoxemia that results in the normal AA gradient now instead of memorizing all these all these uh, examples okay just remember a simple mantra okay if you if you know this mantra okay you can know any cause of hypoxemia and you can means from any cause of hypo hypoxemia you can say that if it re it will result in increased AA gradient or it will result in normal AA gradient so what is that simple mantra see any cause of hypoxemia any pulmonary cause of hypoxemia if the cause of hypoxemia is pulmonary if the pulmonary cause of hypoxemia will always result in increased AA gradient okay any pulmonary cause of hypoxemia will result in increased AA gradient and any extra pulmonary cause of hypoxemia okay extra pulmonary cause of hypoxemia will result in normal AA gradient okay so see let's go through all all the, all the causes see okay the only exception to this rule okay the pulmonary cause will increase a gradient is right to left shunt although it is not a pulmonary cause it results in increase in a gradient so let's go through all the causes of hypoxemia see pulmonary embolism it's pulmonary cause so it will result in increased AA gradient pulmonary edema interstitial fibrosis atelectasis ARDS RDS all of these results in increase in AA gradient right to left shunt is the only only exception that is that is not means it is not a pulmonary cause but it still results in increased AA gradient okay now see all the causes all the extra pulmonary causes of hypoxemia they result in normal a gradient see hypoventilation due to barbiturates or injury to medulla oblongata or pons okay if there is problem in okay the problem in diaphragm is not considered pul as pulmonary cause it is extra pulmonary okay it's outside the lungs so this will result in normal a gradient amyotrophic lateral sclerosis will result in normal a gradient okay although all of these causes hypoxemia they will not alter the a gradient means the a gradient will remain normal now see epiglottitis and crow are sometimes confusing for students see although uh, see epiglottitis and crow they are problem of upper respiratory tract okay upper re respiratory tract these are not considered as pulmonary causes that's why they result in 
normal AA gradient. So if you remember this simple mantra that pulmonary cause results in increased AA gradient and the only exception is right to left shunt and extra pulmonary cause they result in normal AA gradient then you can answer <coughs> sorry you can answer almost any question related to AA gradient on step 1 okay so th this was all about AA gradient and if you remember this simple mantra it will surely be very easy to answer any question now uh, let's move on to VQ mismatch see now what is VQ? VQ is basically the ratio of ventilation means divided by perfusion okay ventilation divided by perfusion now see uh, it is very important VQ this is very very high topic for step 1 okay respiratory physiology now see uh, one see all the students they confuse in this see the ventilation as well as perfusion they are high at the base and ventilation as well as perfusion they are low at the apex again ventilation and perfusion both are low at the apex and ventilation and perfusion both are high at the base but the ventilation perfusion ratio is low at the base and ventilation perfusion ratio is high at the apex see let's let's uh, take numbers so it, it it becomes easy for you let's suppose the ventilation here is uh, let's say 60 okay and perfusion here is 100 okay so what will be the v by q ratio 60 divided by 100 that is 0 0.6 okay this is the vq at base now as we said that both ventilation and perfusion they decrease when we move from base to apex so see let's suppose at uh, apex the ventilation is 30 okay but the perfusion is 10 so what will be the v by q ratio it is 3 see so although ventilation has decreased when we move from base to apex and also perfusion is decreased when we move from base to apex the ventilation by perfusion ratio is higher at the apex because see the decrease in venti uh, decrease in perfusion is too much okay while the uh, decrease in ventilation is a little bit less in comparison to perfusion that's why the vq ratio v by q ratio is higher at apex and lower at the base although the ventilation and perfusion are higher at the base so uh, okay the VQ ratio is higher at the apex that's why mycobacterium tuberculosis it, it likes to grow at the apex okay this is also a high yield question now see uh, here the perfusion is let's say uh, it's 10 and ventilation is 30 okay so the extra 20 ventilation okay it is wasted okay it does not take part in exchange in the similar way so here the ventilation is wasted see the ventilation is too much in comparison to perfusion and here uh, the perfusion is too much okay so here the perfusion is wasted okay L rest of the 40 let's say 100 minus 60 is 40 rest of the 40 perfusion does not take part in any kind of exchange so here perfusion is wasted and here ventilation is wasted now uh, now now let's focus on the graph see this is the graph for ventilation and perfusion and also ventilation perfusion ratio see when we move from base to apex both ventilation and perfusion they decreases see both of them decreases when we move from base to apex but the decrease in perfusion is too much okay while there is not too much decrease in ventilation that's why when we see the v by q ratio it is low at the base and when we move towards the apex it keeps on increasing okay so at apex the v see do not confuse in all these three lines this one is uh, perfusion this is ventilation and this one with pencil is v by q ratio okay so this is about the ventilation and perfusion ratio if you know this then you can almost answer any kind of graphs if they try to alter it now one of the most confusing topic for all the students is this it is given in first aid okay it is about this zone 1 2 and 3 so see let's try to understand okay in a simple way here the most confusing thing for all the student is that they consider P A and P small a as, par as partial pressure of oxygen. These are not partial pressure of oxygen. These are simple pressures. They are not partial pressure of oxygen. First remember that thing. Now let's try to understand. See what is zone 1? It is this upper part of the lung. Okay, what is zone 2? The middle part of the lung. And what, what is zone 3? It is the lower part of the lung. So let's try to understand by making a small diagram. See 
this is the alveoli okay and here the blood flow is coming let's say this is blood flow coming okay from this side and is exiting from this side see the side here is let's say it is arterial side and the pressure here is p small a okay now this one is venous side and the pressure here is p v okay and the pressure in the alveoli is, is p capital a now as we know that at apex the ventilation is too much in in comparison to perfusion okay so the highest pressure in the apex will be in the alveoli that's why the pressure in alveoli is the highest okay and it will compress the arterioles okay it means arterial side and the venous side it will compress the arterial side and venous side because they have less pressure in comparison to the alveolar side now as we move from zone 1 into zone 3 the ventilation means in comparison to perfusion the ventilation ventilation is less that's why here see the highest pressure in zone 2 is in the arterial side okay so see in zone 2 the pressure in the alveoli is greater than the venous pressures but it is less than the arterial pressure see the pressure in the alveoli is gre uh, greater than the venous pressure but it is less than the arterial pressure okay and at the in the zone 3 okay there is too much perfusion there is too much perfusion that's why the pressure in arterial side as well as venous side it is much more than the pressure in the alveoli so this was all about zone 1 2 and 3 and i hope this this will clear all your doubts regarding this this is this was one of the most confusing when i was preparing for step one now see sorry see uh, there is also some information given about shunt and dead space okay so let's try to understand that see if the ventilation becomes zero then v by q ratio becomes zero okay anything divided I means zero divided by anything is always zero and that is equivalent to shunt formation so let's try to understand how how the shunt formation occur see what basically is the shunt i also explained in the pressure volume loop video see if let's say this is the arterial side okay and this is the venous side okay this is the arterial side this is the venous side now if there is connection between arterial side and venous side like a fistula okay then the blood will directly go from arterial side into venous side so this blood which does not take part in any kind of exchange is called shunt okay it means it is shunting from one side to another side so what basically means what what basically is the meaning of shunt see the blood going from arterial side to venous side without taking any part in the exchange of gases so see what happens when ventilation becomes zero see here i have tried to draw a diagram see this is alveoli this is arterial side and this is venous side blood is coming from here and it is exiting from here leaving from here now see if the ventilation becomes zero it means there is no ox no uh, sorry no air coming from the alveoli so it means the blood is coming but it is going without taking any kind of part in the exchange of gases see the blood is simply coming from here and it is leaving there is no any there is no exchange going on here so this kind of situation is called a shunt so what basically is shunt the blood is coming but it does not take part in any kind of exchange that is shunt now see if the blood is not taking any part in the exchange it is shunt if the air is not taking any part in the exchange then that is dead space now see what let's try to understand see what is written here when the perfusion becomes zero then v by q is equal to infinity anything divided by zero is infinity and that results in dead space so what is dead space air air is coming okay but it does not take part in any kind of exchange so let's try to understand let's say here there is a embolus okay so there is no blood flow going on here okay there is zero blood flow here so the air is coming from here okay in the alveolar side and it is leaving the alveoli without any kind of exchange okay there is no exchange of gas here so that is called dead space so basically dead space means the air is coming okay ventilation is normal but it does not take part in any kind of exchange what was shunt the blood was coming okay but it does not take part of part in any kind of exchange because the perfusion was okay but there was defect in the ventilation so whenever there is problem with ventilation it results in shunt formation and whenever there is problem in perfusion it results in the dead space 
so it was all about vq mismatch and a gradient if you have any doubt please mention it in the comment box okay and if you like the video then please do not forget to share it with your friends and also subscribe the channel thank you